Hi everybody and welcome to our Saturday morning live program and uh, once again we're coming to you from the Chip Fair Lele Cafe and great to have you all with us. Hope you can hear me okay. <coughs> I've, um, well I can tell you now, um, I got COVID last week. That wasn't terribly bad and uh, I've certainly recovered everybody okay. Man. Just turn the sound off there. But uh, it's left me with a bit of a chest cold and I'm <coughs> I might have the odd cough from time to time. I actually need to um, get them to give me a glass of water, but we'll get to that. So uh, yeah, welcome. Uh, just a, a quick bit of orientation. This is where we are at the moment, uh, pointing the camera straight out the window and looking out towards uh, the sea. And the ocean is actually very, very active this morning, a big swell coming in. Of course, we are on the Indian Ocean, well, part of it anyway, the, uh, the Andaman Sea. And I'm facing towards the west. So if I went for about 3,000 kilometres, I'd be able to pick up a good Indian takeaway. Uh, but uh, it's a very pleasant morning here. It's going to be hot, hot again. It's always hot here. But there's plenty of swell coming in. Let's have a quick look at uh, that swell. This is early this morning, and these waves, um, I suppose a couple of metres high, and they're coming crashing right into the shore. And they don't, uh, well, crash as waves until they reach the shore, which makes it a bit difficult to get out into the sea. So, uh, yeah, you can see a complete washing machine there. Uh, for people who are along the beach this morning and uh, because we've had these northwesterly winds they've been coming in at speed so it's been certainly very uh, very interesting to watch the the waves this morning and certainly only the bravest would be heading out into uh, that water today for a swim now i consider myself a good swimmer but I certainly am not going to be heading out there into that. So that's the, uh, the sea conditions here at, uh, well, some call it Turtle Beach, others call it Taimung Beach. Uh, either way, a very pleasant day. I'm very happy that you've dropped in. And one thing that we're going to be talking a lot about today is the, uh, the cost of living. Now, <coughs> here's one of those coughs. There are a lot of people that uh, profess to know all about the cost of living in Thailand. I've been living here for 13 years and I thought I pretty much had a handle on the cost of living issue. <clears throat> but the more I live here, the more I realise I really don't. And any of those YouTube videos of people who say, oh, here's a guide to the cost of living. Well, the, the, the key word there is guide because you're going to be surprised, whatever you do. And I, I've learnt that no matter how carefully I budget, and maybe I just budget badly, <clears throat> but it's always the things you don't think about that come to bite you in the ass. Uh, suffice to say, uh, that exactly happened to me yesterday. Now, from time to time, I have to go and do a, a few administrative things and uh, you know, I've got to do the registration for the bikes and the cars and I've got to do a, a 90 day report or I've got to go down and uh, get a photo taken for this or that. And I mean, all these things do take time and uh, at the end of the day, they do cost you money. So I went to the registration branch as you do. I've got two motorcycles, I've got two cars. Only to find out that I thought I'd paid for the registration last year. I went to the DLT, got a stamp, got a receipt. But uh, according to the blue books and the green books, blue books for cars, green books for um, the motorcycles, uh, the registration wasn't paid. Well, of course, I hadn't kept a receipt from last year. And uh, they assured me that it hadn't been paid. Well, <clears throat> you can stand there and you can argue until you're blue in the face, but once they've made their decision that you, for whatever reason, appear not to have paid, you haven't paid. I think I could have come up with a judge, jury and 17 receipts and the result would have been the same. So I had to pay for two years of registrations plus fines. And not only for the registration, but for the third party insurance, which is compulsory. So um, I, you know, was hands on hips and uh, trying to be very earnest and uh, trying to keep smiling 
but no, they just weren't going to hear anything of it. Uh, so I thought I was driving around. Well, I had the registration stickers for the year. I don't know what happened. Anyway, it ended up I had to pay for two years of registration. And uh, two hours of my life, very frustrating. Nobody spoke any English and uh, of course my tyres are appalling. And Google Translate wasn't doing much to help. Certainly wasn't supportive. So it really, as I was driving back, fuming in my registered car, I, uh, I, I settled down and realised, hey, you know, shit happens, and you know, shit happens in Thailand as it happens anywhere else. And it got me thinking to all these unexpected, and I mean, that was obviously out of the box. But things do come to bite you uh, that you just don't expect. Bottom line, after I'd been to the... Uh, hospital for a quick checkup. Um, uh, I'd been to uh, my visa agent. Uh, I'd been to the Department of Land Transport. <coughs> I'd been to Central to put some money in the bank. Didn't last long. I, I came back 85,000 baht lighter than when I went to Phuket yesterday. So um, I sort of resolved. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Mr. Steve Ross driving past. We're recording our Grumpy Old Men program at 1 p.m. today, which will be uploaded tomorrow. So, uh, yeah, it, it was a, a fairly wow, infuriating day. Um, now, I noticed that it is getting quite bright again, so I'm going to close these windows. And uh, does that help? That helps a bit. So there you go. Keeps out some of the noise as well. So, uh, yeah, I, I thought what we'd do is we would um, go through some of the, uh, not only the costs of living here in Thailand, but some of the unexpected costs. Now, to get us started on this, let's go to uh, this website. Hang on, just got to press some buttons here. Excuse me for a moment. Why is that not taking? There we go. And I don't want to do that one. I want to do this one. So this is one website that comes up, for example, it's part of the numbio.com and they've got cost of living prices right around the world. So this is pretty uh, sort of black and white and gives you a range of costs for things like restaurants, a meal in an inexpensive restaurant, go down to market, uh, how much does milk cost for a litre, a loaf of fresh white bread, rice, eggs, and it gives you some, uh, so, some various costs. And it gives you a, a higher cost and a lower cost, a, a general range, and then it puts a marker at which it roughly thinks that you're going to have to uh, to to pay. Uh, and it's got things like transportation, uh, utilities, sports and leisure, childcare, clothing and shoes, rent per month. Obviously, that's a big ticket item, and there's so much variation, and a lot more variation than that really actually indicates. Uh, how much to buy an apartment. Now that's obviously how long is a piece of string as well. And salaries and financing. So you can go about this cost of living thing sort of very mechanically and methodically like this. And as I said, there's any number of YouTubers that say, now this is how much it's gonna cost. And there's people that go for the, you know, try and go to this race to the bottom, you know, the cheapest this and the cheapest that, and I found the cheapest pad thai and I found the cheapest place to live. And you can do this race to the bottom, but it really doesn't help anybody because not everybody sort of wants to live like a pauper, although they may be forced to. So, okay, I know people who live for 1500 US dollars a month and live perfectly well. Now, I couldn't live for 1500 US a month. Uh, I would probably need a little bit more. Uh, th these are just little luxuries, like I like a, a slightly bigger house. I like a backyard. I've got animals. We'll talk about those in a moment. And uh, animals, there's another one. So if you've got animals, there are vet costs and the cost of food. Goodness gracious, that's really starting to mount up. Now these are things when I did uh, various budgets, I didn't account for the cost of pet food, uh, the vet costs, because at that time I did, didn't actually have the animals. So you, you've really sort of got to uh, uh, be prepared, the old scout motto. Uh, now, 
once again, talking about Steve, he ended up, uh, he had to have a hernia operation. So uh, he ended up getting that for a very cheap price. I think it only cost him 10,000 baht, uh, reported widely on his channel. And you can see uh, all those various reports. I think we spoke about it uh, at length on uh, the Grumpy Old Men program as well. So, I mean, obviously there are things that uh, you can get in Thailand that are much cheaper than the West. Some things are gonna cost you the same or more. So there's no comparative thing like uh, Thailand is 50% cheaper than the West. You just can't do it like that. Some things are 80%, 90% cheaper. Some things are 10% cheaper. Some things are 20% more. It's just so many variations. Now, another way of approaching this is you can go into something like a chat GPT and you can ask it to help with uh, putting a budget together. So I asked chat GPT very uh, casually, uh, give me 20 uh, cost of living items that I need to take into account in preparing a budget for Thailand. And so it came up with accommodation, utilities, food, transportation, healthcare, visa fees, entertainment, communication, personal care, fitness. So, I mean, with, with all these, just tell me how many of these things you, you've actually taken into account in preparing your budgets and which of these items uh, that you have been surprised at the cost for, either very high or very low. I mean, the whole point of this is to say that whatever you think it's gonna cost you to live in Thailand, it's going to cost more. Uh, don't, don't think it's going to cost less, it will cost more. And there are these things that come out of left field that are going to bite you. And you, you need to be prepared for those. Now you need to be prepared by either putting aside a bit of money, or you need to be prepared by doing much more thorough budgeting. But I have to say, although I would have thought my budgeting is very good, it's things that you just don't even think about. Or, or won't be able to think about, or you simply don't know about, that are the things that end up uh, biting you in the ass. Now, yesterday's problem at the DLT was obviously some sort of uh, uh, bureaucratic error, either on their end or my end, but also th there's a language issue there. And if I'd taken somebody who spoke Thai with me, as I always do when I go to the DLT, but I didn't yesterday, I was brave. I thought I can do this by myself, but I failed miserably. I failed miserably to the tune of, I think it costs around about 23,000 baht to pay for the two years of registration, the fines and, uh, and everything else. I had to go and get a, a, a what do you call it? A, um, uh, you go to a service station and they check your car. I don't know, roadworthy certificate for the Honda, good heavens, not the Mercedes, which is 30 years old, the Honda, because it's over, well, they said it's over 10 years old. I was pretty sure I bought it in 2015. Anyway, they said I had to go and get a uh, roads uh, uh, worthy certificate. And, and once again, once they've decided you have to do this, you have to do that. No amount of pleading is going to get you out of it. I'm very relaxed now. I came back last night and realized I'm still the luckiest guy in the world, <clears throat> despite that. So a few other uh, items here. And uh, it, it mentioned, uh, we got to fitness. I mean, not everybody's gonna be buying gym memberships, but uh, 11, we got to clothing, uh, household items, insurance, language classes, if you wanna go down that track, travel, weekend getaways, miscellaneous expenses. I have no idea how you cater for miscellaneous expenses. Uh, got two guests, we'll bring them over to... Uh, that was Pla, who is the owner of the property. We'll get back to the cost of living in a moment. Come and say hello. These are two guests staying with us. This is uh, Kin, 
and uh, this is Stefano, Hello. and they've been uh, staying all the way from Australia. Oh, we'll have to show subtitles. <laughs> they speak Australian. Uh, and so, tell us about the quality of the Bonneville Beach House. Oh, five star, uh, we're top notch. Had a blast. Yeah, had a blast. We'll and definitely be back next year. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> top notch service. Pick up from the airport and back. <laughs> and the beds aren't they comfortable? Oh yes, beds are amazing. Very, very, we get good suggestions yeah. about the eateries around here. <laughs> so, uh, a question to you both: Which is the best restaurant in the Time Lung Beach? Oh, oh, undoubtedly, it's Pisao. Definitely, Pisao, okay. we have to. You, if you ever come here, you have to try it. You won't regret it. Order everything. One night isn't enough. <laughs> so, a recommendation: Pisao restaurant, which is listed in the Michelin Guide. Yes, as well. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, where else have you been that you enjoyed during your stay? You're speaking to an audience of oh, I don't know, <laughs> tens. Ooh. No, there's, we've got I don't know. Four or five hundred people online, and about twenty thousand people will see this. Wow! Including your mother. <laughs> well, there's definitely that uh, bar beach just around the corner uh, that you bar can beach. sit down. And bar beach. The, the beach bar. Uh, oh, um, George. George. Pizza. George Pizza. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah, the feet in the sand. Yes, uh, and you watch the bar. sunset. Tables on the sand. Oh. Because we do face the sunset, we put on a show every night. Yeah. And you went to Cafe Del Mar in Ooh. Phuket. That was amazing. That was that amazing. Was if you totally it, different from where we're now. Yeah. I mean, it, it was definitely a, a whole day to enjoy yourself, unwind get, um, with friends, relax, great food. How much drinks. did you spend at Cafe Del Mar, <laughs> remembering uh, that your mother is watching? Uh, I can't remember, but I'll let you know once I get the credit card. A bill. lot. <laughs> Okay, so th these it's far more expensive than your average experience. That's for sure. <laughs> so uh, go and have breakfast. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Tim. My pleasure. Bye, everyone. I'll give you twenty baht later. <laughs> so guests, uh, with their kind thoughts on, uh, oh, we've got more of them coming as well. So this is the whole gang. I thought we were going to be interviewing people all morning. Anyway, what was I talking about? The cost of living. Now, a lot of you have uh, given us some examples of uh, cost of living. We'll just say hello to these folks uh, before we go. So come and say hello. This is the uh, live YouTube program. These are more of the guests. Hello. Uh, you're not, there you are, you're on now. Yeah. Come and say hello. This is the live YouTube program. Why hello? Yes. Live YouTube program. It's a lovely place. Right. Oh yes, tell us how good are the beach houses? Uh, we were just talking about how beautiful it was just to walk along the beach every morning with basically no one there other than a couple of fishermen. There you go. Yeah. Er erudite. And, uh, and, and which part of the world are you from? I live in Melbourne, Australia. But, but you seem to travel a lot. No, only a lot this last two weeks. Okay. <laughs> Are you in China and Hong Kong? China. Or? No, China and Bangkok. Here. China and Bangkok, okay. And then Hanoi. Is it hot? Yes. Yes. There you go. Yeah. All right, the big one. It's hot. Uh, and this gentleman, I think he's hiding from the police because he doesn't, <laughs> doesn't want to be on camera. So, uh, okay. He's staying off camera. All right, so let's go into uh, some of your comments about... Um, uh, the, the, the cost of living because you, you've been very gracious with your uh, your thoughts on this cost of living um, uh, trying to find some uh, has Tim grown his hair you think so no 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 uh, did you visit the viewpoint in Pangao that's uh, to the guests no uh, good morning from, uh, from is anybody going to say anything about the cost of living every YouTube channel you can live for a thousand baht a month in Thailand Richard uh, thanks for that well if you, you probably could if you were struggling live for a thousand a thousand dollars what 34,000 baht yeah you could probably live but the thing is uh, d does that include your health insurance uh, does that include your, your internet? Um, it might cover your rent, might cover your food, might cover one night out a week, I don't know, depending on where you do it. And where you live in Thailand has such a big bearing <clears throat> because 
if you live in Phuket or Pattaya or Circumvent Road in Bangkok, you're going to be paying very high rental, for example. And because the rentals for the shops are comparatively high as well, the cost of the food is going to be higher in those locations as well. Yeah, but if you get up to a Udon Whoop Whoop up in northeastern Thailand, you go to live in out of a Con Can, or maybe you uh, live down in the south of Thailand in uh, Nekon uh, Si Tamarat, Nekon Si Tamarat, or Patalun. I mean, it's going to be so, so much cheaper. And the, the difference between the high and the low is exacerbated here in Thailand because the highs can be very high and the lows can be very low. Yeah, I know around here where I can get a 40 baht pad thai. And I can promise you it'll cost just as much, uh, sorry, it'll taste just as good as the 400 baht pad thai in the five star hotel. So these are the things that uh, really trip people up and confuse them, where they see a, a thai dish like a pad thai costing 40 baht or 400 baht or even more in some locations, and it'll taste exactly the same. How do they do it? I don't know. But that's some of the secrets and the mysteries and the wonders of living here in Thailand. What other items did they have in that list from, uh, from ChatGPT? As I try and press the right buttons. Uh, miscellaneous expenses, yeah, pets. Uh, cost associated with owning and caring for pets, savings putting aside money for emergencies or future plans. I would highly recommend that. Once you get to my age or older, there are going to be costs associated with living that you don't have when you're younger. Uh, there are going to be issues that you're just going to have to address health-wise that your health insurance may or may not cover. And again, it could become an unexpected cost that you're just not aware of. Uh, taxes, depending on your situation, you may have tax obligations. And now this is an important one because not only uh, the, the rules that have been updated since January, uh, the start of this year, pertaining to the payment of taxes from incoming monies into Thailand, and that's going to ha start having an impact uh, when people start paying tax next year. Obviously, the, uh, the, this year is the first year it's in force, but you're not having to do a tax report until next year. Do you have to do a tax report? Do you have to get a tax file number? Uh, all these things are questions that you have to go and see an accountant about. I'd recommend two or three accountants because it's not black and white and we are going to have to wait for a few years until we get a few examples of exactly what this tax situation uh, does bring up. Now I've uh, given my uh, situation and the tax I pay uh, and how I pay my taxes. I've just done a, a bit of a deep dive into that over the past couple of weeks to see how I fall in relation to, uh, to this new tax reporting. Well, it's not new, it's just some people are gonna have to be doing tax reporting that didn't in the past. <clears throat> so it, it's just going to be a, a wait and see. But I've done my homework and I recommend that you do your homework as well. And then the last one here, cultural activities, expenses related to exploring local culture, such as museums, uh, entry fees and things like that. I mean, un unless you do want to just lock yourself up at home, uh, you are going to want to go and do some entertainment. And the entertainment costs uh, can be this or this. If you go to a national park, you might be able to talk your way into getting in for, uh, for free or paying the Thai amount, or you might have to pay the, uh, the, the higher amount that foreigners often have to pay. So, uh, yeah, there's just a quick list from ChatGPT. And the, the list can go on and on, uh, but it's the unexpected costs that are always going to come and uh, bite you. The extra two years of uh, registration of Tim's car will be divided up between the managers. Well, maybe, uh, as I said, um, Question, at the land transport, how lemony were your lips? They were very lemony. I was doing my best to smile. Uh, 85,000, wow, the scooters would be no more than 1,500. That's not quite right. 
So, yeah, two years of registration. Uh, but at the end of the day, um, oh, I don't know. Don't even remind me. I just shared that with you. It's either a huge mistake on my part or a bureaucratic error on theirs or a combination of the both. Uh, <clears throat> there is a, um, I call her the door bitch. Now, it's not really fair to call her the door bitch. Except that's exactly what she is. Uh, she is the, uh, uh, the gatekeeper at the Department of Land Transport here in Phuket. Here. There in Phuket. And she's been the same lady for, I don't know, the past 10 years. And she knows me. And ever since day one, she just didn't take a shine to me. And she decided she was going to pull me through the ringer. And every time I go there, she, this look on her face, oh, it's you again. And uh, I have to go through this process. Um, she checks all my documents. She goes, no, more, more documents. Or uh, you need photo. What, what do I need a photo for? You get, you get photo. And she just makes my life difficult every time I go, which is why I've avoided the Department of Land Transport for so long now. And I usually get an agent to go and do things for me. But uh, anyway, there you go. So yeah, you can laugh at uh, my stupidity at the Department of Land Transport, but uh, it's just one of those sort of things. Uh, okay, um, Phuket is not cheap. Most tourist places are not cheap. Cosmo, you're absolutely right. Uh, but then again, I lived in Phuket for uh, well, a solid 12 years and I lived in four or five different locations. And uh, there are still parts in Phuket where you can live a cheap life. Remembering there are about 400, 420,000 permanent Thai occupants in Phuket and they don't want to pay tourist prices. And in most cases they don't. So there are enclaves around Phuket where you can live very cheaply indeed in regards to rent and food. But of course you can go to the west coast, to uh, Patong, to uh, Karon, Kata, uh, Cheung Tale, Bang Tao, and you're going to be paying uh, a lot more than you'd pay in other parts of Thailand. So yeah, Phuket is a large island, so it's not all of Phuket is expensive, but parts of it are. And the same uh, with Pattaya. If you start at the beach, it's going to be more expensive than if you get uh, two or three roads back from, uh, from the main beach. Tim says a person who's got a Thai name, you probably forgot to do it last year. You forgot it. Comes with the age. Well, okay. I hear what you're saying, and you might be right, but yeah, we'll see. Bad Badger retired in Thailand. D did you do a long-term lease for the land you built your house on? I think they're talking together. Fitness ain't one of them for me, says Cosmo. And further on, uh, back down the list, um, Cosmo said, depends on how your lifestyle is, but in general, a normal life is around 1,300 euros a month. Uh, it also depends where in Thailand you live. Rural is always cheaper than a big city like Bangkok. Uh, okay, we've got Scott D, uh, who turns 51 on the 18th, the 18th of what? Turned 51, oh, yeah, okay, so Scott turned uh, 51 two, two days ago, four more years till a somewhat early, meticulously planned retirement, spring cleaning organisation projects continued here and making progress. Okay, so uh, happy birthday to you, Scott, and uh, best wishes. Um, so a lot of people making comments here. Uh, now, some, Thomas Pickering was saying, what's the story read the lady from British Columbia, Canada with a scooter accident in Phuket and a shattered foot now hospitalized in Bangkok? I had a quick search, uh, Thomas. I couldn't find out anything about that lady at all, except to say that on a weekly basis, there would be five or 10 people who have scooter accidents who end up in hospitals Sadly, most of the time the insurance is not going to pick up the tabs unless you've got the proper license for a motorcycle here in Thailand, unless you're wearing a helmet, unless dit, dot, 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 ditto, ditto, ditto. Um, uh, Gail says, question, is your home complete with construction where no more stray animals will find their way 
into your home? Uh, this is an interesting question, and I've actually got uh, a bit of the photographic uh, evidence as to what happens. Now, this also uh, concerns those people who are interested in what's happening with my new dog. I've got a dog called Daisy. Now, Daisy strolled through the gate, which was open about that wide, jumped up on the sofa. This is only last Saturday, so we only had Daisy for a week. And Daisy said, I'm, I'm staying. Now, we found out that Daisy's a, uh, a three-month-old soy dog and uh, she's found her way into uh, to our property. You actually see here a bit of the property. It's just untouched grassland, I suppose. Um, it's quite a large property. It's around about 100 metres deep in total. Uh, the buildings are at the front um, sort of 30 or 40 metres and then the rest is just all left at the moment. Uh, but the cats and the dogs, the first day, it's uh, it's improved a little bit since then, but here you can see Dina sort of semi starting to get used to uh, the puppy who really wants to play with Dina, but Dina doesn't want a lot to do it. But uh, they're starting to thaw out, but you also get a, a sense of the size of the property. And you can see we've got a fence right around the property. So here we go. This is uh, Dina playing with Daisy the puppy. And uh, yeah, you can see the wall right around the property there. Daisy just uh, sort of doing her best to try and entice some sort of reaction from the cat. Um, pretty hard to keep from, oh, Dina sort of have a lunge at you. And uh, Dina sometimes chases the puppy, but they seem to be sort of uh, getting on a little bit better than they were when they first met. <laughs> it was pretty nasty. And the puppy knows its place. So I think uh, next week we have to take the puppy down to get uh, immunisation shots. Uh, already had a dewormed in two months. We have to uh, go and take her to, uh, to get neutered uh, so we won't have any more puppies. Um, now the Prime Minister was in town. We'll get back to the cost of living in a moment. Uh, a lot of people, I just have to, have to dig through all those, uh, those articles. But the Prime Minister was here yesterday in uh, Phuket. Calcid English saying the Prime Minister visits Phuket province on Friday, said the tunnel cutting through a mountain and connecting roads between Katu and Patong districts should be sped up as it was initiated under the Yingluck administration. Now the Yingluck administration was, well 2014 she was kicked out, so I suppose she was voted in maybe 2011, 2012, I'd have to look it up. But no, this Patong Tunnel, this tunnel from the Katu area to the main party town in Phuket, uh, that's been proposed for 20 or 30 years. It's been brought up numerous times, numerous studies and environmental impact studies have been done. Billions of baht have been spent on deciding whether they should build this tunnel or not. But it wasn't initiated by the Yingluck government. Um, he complains that the, const the contraction, the contract costs, construction cost is now 16 billion baht or twice the original budget. And that's partly because uh, it's just been dragging on for so long. He adds he wants both Phuket and Samui to become world-class islands with commensurate infrastructure. Now both Samui and Phuket would have to undergo a major infrastructure transformation for them to be considered world-class. Now I'd also have to say that to, to make them world-class do we want Phuket and Samui to look like Singapore or Ibiza or I don't know name other holiday islands around the world? I'd say not the reason people come to Phuket, Samui, Bali maybe less so these days than uh, in the past, but, but it was because they were a bit untidy, a bit unusual. They were a cultural experience. The, uh, <coughs> they still had beaches where you could go and sit and not see a tourist all day. And I have to say, even though Phuket, for example, has been very busy, like really, really busy, I can take you to a beach where you're not going to see another tourist all day. Uh, it's got about 32 different beaches. Same with Samui. I mean, if you're going to hang around Chuang Beach, uh, you're going to get one sort of experience. 
But if you want the real Samui experience, you've got to head half an hour away from that. And there are plenty of nice little quiet spots. And beyond Samui and Phuket, you've got um, uh, Koh Samet, uh, what's the one, uh, Koh, Koh Khod, which is down uh, near the Cambodian border. There's all sorts, Koh, Koh, Koh Khod, can't remember the exact pronunciation. But there's a lot of little islands that people don't really know about and a lot of little secret beaches. I'm going to be making a video about some of these lesser known beaches. Tai Mung being one of them, uh, which I found. So, do we want Phuket and Samui to become world-class islands with commensurate infrastructure? I'd say maybe not. But uh, speaking of that uh, particular tunnel project, this is it. We've got uh, Katsu on the right, we've got Patong on the left, and that's uh, sort of, well, the hill hardly a mountain in between and the blue bit there is where they want to build the tunnel uh, because at the moment you have to go over this road and uh, at the top of the picture there is Katu and the road winds its way up Patong Hill and then it winds its way down the bottom and on any given day it can be a bit of a well potentially dangerous trip because you've got trucks and you've got motorbikes and you've got cars uh, and sometimes people walking along the side of the road now, if you have a look closely at that picture where the arrow's pointing, this was uh, when part of the road collapsed. This happened, oh, gee, it would have been uh, nearly 18 months ago. And uh, they were saying they were going to fix it in six days. Well, that didn't happen. But, uh, yeah, at the time, part of that road disappeared. They had to close the road completely. And uh, they put in a, an alternative route. Uh, but it was a big problem for the island. But it wasn't the high season at the time, as you can see, obviously, there during the wet season. They did a very, very good repair of that particular infrastructure. And it's uh, now a lot better than it ever was before. And they did a very good job in fixing it up. But that's why they're putting this tunnel through. Will they put the tunnel through in the next five years? This is one of those things we need to put in the column. Uh, things that are proposed that will never happen. I think the Patong Tunnel is one of them. So uh, yeah, let's go back to talking about the cost of living in Thailand. Just covering a little bit of interesting news there. The Prime Minister on his fourth visit to Phuket since being elected. There is no other province that he's visited four times since being elected. So he sees a particular importance uh, I think he sees uh, Phuket as a cash cow. Uh, clearly, that's what the, sh the numbers show. I mean, it's the province outside of Bangkok, probably, that contributes the most to uh, Thailand's GDP when it comes to tourism. I mean, in Phuket, it's tourism or, or what? There's no pineapple plantations there. There's uh, no industry to talk of. So, yeah, I mean, Phuket is all about tourism. So... I think he wants to get more tourists going there. I have no idea where they're going to go. And uh, trying to make it more of a cash cow for the government. Anyway, we'll move on from that uh, to people talking about the cost of living. Uh, politics. Robbie is throwing in a question. Do you expect rioting if Peter and Move Forward are kicked out of Parliament? Uh, Robbie, it's not, they're not being kicked out of Parliament per se. Uh, it's that they would disband the party. Now, a lot of political parties have been disbanded before in Thailand. Uh, yes, I know it's used by a weapon um, for the Conservatives and the Constitutional Court to get rid of uh, potential uh, winning parties. Been done before in the past. Move forward, aren't the first party to uh, face being disbanded? Uh, no, I don't think there... Well, there, there will be some protest. I don't think there's going to be... Uh, a lot of protests though I think some people are just um, assuming it's going to happen now those MPs except for a few of the top MPs like Peter for example they'll just join other political parties and become well part of those uh, obviously taking their progressive ideas with them and hoping that they can uh, get them affiliated into the party they're moving to's uh, manifestos but uh, the, the MPs are still elected MPs, even though the party has been disbanded. So we'll just have to wait and see. It's probably a few months away until 
that happens or doesn't happen. Remembering that there is also a Senate election in May this year. The hand-picked uh, army flunky Senate are going to have to stand down. I, I noted that a lot of them are doing their quick European trips before, oh, for education before they get flung out. Anyway, there will be a new Senate and those elected senators, they are going to be much more progressive, a lot more progressive than the current Senate. So given the next election and the, any new political parties that are going to stand, we know what's going to happen. We'll just have to wait and see. Uh, Robbie, so that's what I think very quickly on that. Ross Jureka, the neutering dogs is very cheap here in Nissan compared to Australia. Yeah, vet fees generally. Uh, I took uh, New Daisy, New Daisy, up to the vet. We had her dewormed, checked over, um, and we bought a collar for her, collar that we can stretch. And uh, that, I think we walked out 650 baht lighter. In Australia, uh, yeah, vets were very, very expensive. The worst part, oh, by far the worst part was there were two dogs I had to take to get put down over the years. Um, a harrowing experience, getting a dog that you've loved for 14, 15, no, one of them was nearly 21 years old. And having them put down is a harrowing experience. <laughs> but of course, it costs money. So no matter, no, no, um, you, you're not only, oh my dog, oh. but then you have to pay the bill for having them put down. Oh, anyway. Shirt rating 10 out of 10. Thank you very much. I got this at the uh, the New Year market just here in uh, Taiwan. Um, okay, lots of brown envelopes with big building projects in Phuket. Yeah, I mean, look, it's easy to say that, Bill. Uh, and a lot of people keep on talking about the level of corruption. Mind you, there is corruption everywhere in the world. Anywhere there's politics, there's corruption. Um, probably the worst that I've ever read about is the amount of paid for lobbying in American politics. But that's corruption, no matter how you want to paint it. The amounts paid by big pharma, other big companies, the, the tobacco companies, uh, the amounts paid to politicians in the, uh, under the banner of lobbying, it's pure corruption. So it's very easy to say that the uh, you know, Thai corruption is this or that. And other Asian countries are just as bad. But it's very in your face here and it's uh, you sort of you know, explained as to how much you're going to have to pay for, for this or that. Corruption happens everywhere in the world. And uh, yeah, I've seen much worse corruption in other countries or read about it than I have here in Thailand. But I'm, I'm, not, I'm not denying that it doesn't happen here. Of course it happens. It happens a lot. Maybe it happened at the Department of Land Transport a little bit yesterday. Most Thais get the injection for female dogs to prevent pregnancy. It costs 20 baht and lasts for three months. Oh, Adam, thanks for that. Um, no, I'll be getting her neutered. Um, it, it's a quick, safe operation, and she'll uh, retire in uh, retire. She'll uh, be uh, up and running around in a week. Uh, Tim, you know that you never need to go to the DLT. I always use small local companies fixing everything for me. Yeah, you, I usually use a, an agent to do all that stuff for me. <sighs> be using the agent again next year. Uh, Robbie, a vet is healthcare without government assistance. That's why it's so expensive. Also, doctors only have to deal with one species. Fair comment. Bad Badger retired in Thailand. Nobody wants to talk about the cost of living. Uh, Phuket is going to be the Singapore of Thailand. That's a really interesting comment, given that um, Phuket and Singapore are roughly the same size. Don't come and tell me exactly what I don't care what the exact sizes are but they're roughly the same size I think Singapore's a little bit bigger or maybe not I can't remember but they're roughly the same size comparing Singapore and Thailand is like comparing chalk and cheese they are so different uh, one's got a lot of soul and the other one hasn't one is a very expensive place to visit and the other's occasionally expensive in some locations. 
One's built up with an amazing uh, road trans, uh, well, mass transport system. The other isn't. A Phuket well, <laughs> has got the opposite of good transportation. It's got the worst transportation network of just about anywhere I've been in the world. The roads, the roads are good, but the roads are packed. And the roads were put together when uh, people were going from here to there or here to there. And those needs have changed and the infrastructure of the roads has just simply not kept up with the demands of the, uh, the arrivals of foreign tourists, mainly. <clears throat> I mean, 11 or 12 million people visited Phuket in the last 12 months. That'll probably go up to 13 or 14 million, which are roughly the numbers back in uh, 2019. Which means, I think, I know I'll be fact-checked on this, I think more tourists come to Phuket than go to Australia, the whole country. Fact-check me on that. But it's a very visited, uh, very visited island. Uh, Keon Nunes uh, sharing an experience. Our dog had cancer and got chemotherapy. Here, cost about 4,000 baht. My friend in the US had the same type of cancer and it cost him $5,000 US. Yeah, pet care generally, like dentistry, other medical care here generally, is, uh, is very cheap. Talking about the cost of living, so there we go. Uh, Tim, send me some clean air. You're in Chiang Mai, Frank. Sorry, uh, our air here is uh, blue skies. Um, I think there's a bit of light air pollution if you look out to the mountains, but it's generally pretty good. If it's choice between Singapore and Phuket, give me Phuket every time, says Thug Life. Yeah, look, I lived in Singapore for about six months, um, about uh, 10 years ago. No, no, it's longer than that. It's about 14 years ago. But uh, look, it's efficient, it's clean, but it's got absolutely no soul. There's nothing even slightly interesting about the place. The food is sort of very, very same, same and quite expensive. Street food, again, seems to lack uh, a certain amount of love or soul as well. I don't know, I just didn't enjoy Singapore. I mean, it's a nice place to visit, but hellishly expensive these days. True Blue Thai, morning Tim, just joined the stream. I live Jong Tiam in a Thai area two kilometers from the beach for 3,500 baht for rent, water and electricity max each month when I arrived I spent money on things I don't need look true blue tie for 3,000 baht for rent water and electricity maximum each month you've got a very very good deal and I dare say not a terribly large property what room air conditioner I don't know I can't imagine you've got air conditioning in there that you use and you well, 3,500 it couldn't be you couldn't include electricity I know, unless it's just a room like a hotel room, or I don't know. Uh, but, but look, thank you, True Blue Tie. I would say 99% of us don't want to be living in whatever you're living in. Uh, you might be existing, you might be surviving. I'm not really sure if that's living. I spend a lot of time in my house, so working, recording videos, editing, entertaining, talking to friends. Uh, my house has to be a little bit more than uh, just a room. If I'm going to be spending more than half of my uh, my life in it each day, excuse me, it's going to blow my nose. I'm sorry, you can probably hear that, but you couldn't see it. That's the main thing. Uh, we used to go to the Marina Bay food court and we found prices on certain dishes lower than Thailand, says Andy. Ah... Uh, Okay, I'm not sure where you've been in Thailand, but I, I, I seriously and respectfully doubt that. Uh, Singapore, is, I, there's just nothing nice I can say about Singapore except Changi Airport, big thumbs up, number one. Maybe it's clean. That's about it. Uh, I still pay COVID price for my house in Phuket, says Ik Bins. 4,500 baht a month, they never put the prices higher. Yeah, look, uh, good luck. I um, don't pay much more for my houses up here on Pai Mung. Like we're 20 minutes away from Phuket, I'm on a beach. 
So you can get yeah, cheap rent, but you've got to sort of shop around for it. Don't ever rent through an agent. Oh dear. If you want to save some money, don't rent through an agent. Uh, you need to go around, do some research, knock on some doors, ask some friends, ask some Thai friends, ask those friends to ask somebody else, put a notice on Facebook, and you'll find something that is much, much cheaper than a, uh, a real estate agent, property manager will be able to provide for you. They do a good service, but they're not gonna be finding the, uh, the, the properties that are perhaps a bit lower than market value or the market that the real estate agents perceive you should be paying. Uh, sidewalks full of Western tourists blocking the way is frustrating in Phuket. You've just got to deal with it. Yeah, I mean, depending where you are, but uh, yeah, sidewalks generally in Thailand are perhaps not as wide as they should be. Um, okay, the uh, th Thailand camping with Nat Natta and Jay. The yearly vehicle inspection is required after a car is seven years old, not 10 years. There you go, that's what it is. So I had to pay for a roadworthy something or rather vehicle inspection. Thank you very much, Thailand Camping with Natta and Jay. I figure that's the name of your channel. I'll check it out after the show. Good morning to you, Tim, from Niagara Falls in Canada. I've been to Niagara Falls in Niagara. Niagara, Buffalo on the US side. And I did the Lady of the Mist or something trip. This is back in 1983. I was in um, Niagara Falls. Sure, the water's still coming over the top but much the same uh, Singapore is safe says uh, take the cannoli Thailand's very safe too you know um, is Singapore safer I think we'd probably have to safer on the roads yeah for sure safer otherwise I don't know have to uh, check on that um, Richard Evans says I'd prefer to pay a bit more for somewhere nicer to live. Same with hotels. Good morning from the Mornington Peninsula, says DJM. I used to, well, I was born on the Mornington Peninsula. In fact, I was born in Mornington. A nice part of the world. Well, again, I've got a funny feeling that that lovely sort of holiday touristy area has probably become overrun in the 13 years that I haven't been back to Australia. Yeah, well, a third, th uh, when was I last on the Mornington Peninsula? Well, probably about four years ago, but only briefly. But um, yeah, getting very, very busy down there. Uh, the cost of living in Singapore is higher than Thailand, says Adam. No shit. It's a lot higher. A lot higher. Good heavens. Scott D, thank you very, very much. I've uh, got a super chat from Scott. He thinks, says thanks to Luke Wanton for his tremendous support of this channel. Luke, who's Luke? Uh, his super chat was overlooked. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, I'm gonna scroll back. Luke, where are you? Ah, oh, here we are. Luke, I'm sorry, I missed your super chat, but thank you very, very much. Uh, appreciated, Luke, I'm sorry I missed that. I was yak, yak, yakking. Uh, just imagine, you're trying to look at a camera, you're trying to check that the sound is okay, you're trying to check the vision is okay, you're trying to read the messages, and you're trying to think of something to say at the same time. And then occasionally having to check the iPad so if you're running the video from there. So, not hard to miss things, but Luke, thank you very much. Uh, very, uh, very much appreciated. Lunch for you and Steve this afternoon. Yeah, so uh, we do sometimes go around about lunchtime to do the programs and uh, we do end up usually having a meal. Last week was a bit expensive. We went to uh, Aquella Golf Course with the air conditioning and the nice food and the napkins. Uh, Luke, thank you very much. Uh, I don't know where we're going today, uh, but I do know that we're going to be test driving Vegemite. There's a preview for you, Steve. Marmite and Promite, which are considered sort of breakfast spread delicacies in Australia, maybe New Zealand. And uh, this is all with Anzac Day coming up next week, which we'll probably speak briefly about. Uh, an important day for me and for New Zealanders. Um, 
So yeah, we're going to be doing that taste test. So I've got to take the toaster with me, some bread, some butter, and Marmite, Vegemite, and Promite. And this is because Jack and Diane delivered some Vegemite and Marmite, which I haven't tried for a long time. But we're going to try those and see what Steve, I don't know if he's ever tried them, but uh, we're going to do a live taste test. And just watch his face as he goes, just watch his face, see how he reacts. Luke, thank you very much. And thank you, Scott, for reminding me. Um, okay, so uh, what else we got here? Uh, cost of living. Uh, so I suppose the, the bottom line when it comes to the, uh, the, the cost of living issue, it, it's just going to cost you more than what you think it's going to cost. And I think it, it is just built into us, sorry I'm scratching my nose again, um, that w when we're doing our costs, and for example, we're trying to do a budget because we want to spend as least as possible. What we tend to do is always look for the, the cheapest costs and we don't give any wriggle room. We don't allow for the fact that after a year that price might go up. We just do whatever we can in our mind to keep those costs as low as we can. So we're always seeking the lowest cost and we forget that, oh, actually I, I did want a bed in my rented property. Oh, I, I think I'd like air conditioning. Oh. I don't want to live 28 kilometres from Patia. So, yeah, just um, th the only way to really accurately do some sort of budgeting for the cost of living in Thailand is to live here on your terms. Not on what YouTubers tell you you're going to spend. Come here and actually do the hard work and do the research and find out what you're going to have to spend. But as some people say, you can live on a thousand dollars a month maybe you can I don't think you'd live a particularly enjoyable life be a very simple life and maybe you're happy to do that read books and put your feet up but if you want to you know live a life and go out and see things and uh, you know, go and see a movie every now and then go to a cultural show uh, maybe fly somewhere and visit some friends or have a look at a different part of Thailand I mean if you want to live a life it's just going to cost you more than a thousand baht a month. Uh, in, in my case, it costs me a lot more than that. I mean, well, I'll go, I, I don't really sort of want to share the exact cost. And of course, I am running a, a business uh, and I've got my YouTube. Uh, now, the YouTube doesn't really cost me very much. It costs me time. But uh, you know, I, I make a little bit from that. But uh, yeah, I, it's very difficult just to say, this is what I spend, so this is what you're going to spend as well. Uh, health insurance, I think, is one of those areas where people can get really uh, mixed up. The, the initial premium cost <clears throat> may be quite high, or maybe it's quite low. But then you get to the hospital and they say, well, no, uh, your health insurance doesn't cover that or that. Or you want a bed? Oh, well, you're going to have to pay extra for that. And there's all that fine print. Uh, now, a lot of people, uh, myself included, I haven't claimed on my health insurance ever. I've had the same health insurance for about eight years now. It'll cover me well past 70. In fact, it'll cover me until I die. But I know once you start leaning on your health insurance, the premium's going to go up and they start adding things onto your policy which you can't claim on in the future if you've already claimed for them. And again, different insurance, different insurance companies have got different, uh, different details. But remember, the insurance company is in business to make money, not to give you money. So you really got to do your homework on health insurance and you'll find that you know, if you get a cheap uh, package, there's going to be a lot of things, probably with my luck, the things I uh, didn't think would happen to me, that aren't covered. So yeah, some people just put a bit of money away and they just cope with them when they come up and basically they insure themselves. Now, if uh, you get a retirement visa, an O visa in Thailand, it's not compulsory at the moment anyway that you have to have health insurance. If you get an OA visa, that is a retirement visa from outside the country, part of that visa is that you have to have a compulsory health insurance. 
and the insurance companies they, uh, they have selected there are, are quite expensive. So uh, you, know, you do need to be careful with that. Uh, but uh, saying goodbye to my guests, I've got to drive them to uh, the airport a bit later. Uh, Cosmo has a good tip. Good tip to the co- blah, 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 blah. Cosmo, good tip for the cost of living. But instead of rent, yeah, you can sell a scooter taxi every time. But if you buy a scooter, in the long run, it's cheaper. Ah, okay. Well, there you go. That's a good tip. So, yeah, I mean, if you're living in Bangkok and you're taking motorcycle taxis every day, well, those 20, 30 baht per trip start adding up. Did you budget for that? If you buy a scooter, um, you could probably get a cheap one for, I don't know, 15, 20,000 baht that's, you know, got a bit of life left in it, uh, like a 10 year old iClick or something like that. A 10 year old Zuma. I mean, very reliable bikes, nothing is going to go wrong with them. And uh, you'd probably pay for them in, uh, in a short time. But then again, you've got to cope with the, uh, the maintenance, <laughs> the registration, and uh, just, yeah, coping with the traffic. And the traffic is another thing that you'll need to cope with. It's, traffic doesn't cost you anything, but I always used to jump on the back of the, uh, the motorbikes because those guys do it all day, every day. They know the shortcuts. And they're good riders, and I, in all the years I've been reporting news, I can't ever report uh, expat dies on the back of a motorcycle taxi. I'm sure it's happened, but it's not something that happens very often. Um, so thank you for that, uh, Cosmo, that uh, suggestion. Could the Thai government convert some of those Thai jets sitting at Sawanapum Airport into water tankers to fight the fires? This is from Craig Turek. Uh, they could probably get uh, 400 Burmese people, give them a bucket of water each, fly over the flames, and... Sorry, uh, I'll have to go back in a moment. Uh, and, and throw a bucket of water each. That, that would be good. And th- they'd have better aim than just opening up the, the bomb doors. I think to convert a jet into a water tanker would cost a lot of money. That's what I'm thinking anyway. Craig, uh, did you miss the super chat? Sorry, I'm going back through my super chats. I'm sorry if I've missed somebody. Uh, Super chat, super chat, super chat, super chat. Sorry, everyone. Um, I hate, I hate, hate, hate missing super chats. I mean, they're so important and I really appreciate them. So Luke and uh, Scott, I think they're the only two super chats we've had today. Um, And I apologize if I've missed anybody. I don't mean to. No, I think uh, I've only got those two. But uh, yeah, if, if I have missed a super chat, I, I, I hate it. The insult, the insult investor says, Singapore is a no-no for weed smokers. Well, yeah. Uh, good morning, Tim. 43 degrees forecast for Mahasarakam today. That's from George. Thank you, George. Yes, do your best to uh, drink a lot. And uh, so thank you to, uh, to Luke and to Scott for the Super Chats today. Uh, okay, Bad Badger retired in Thailand. Singapore, Phuket are different, but it's uh, going to go that way despite the infrastructure and logistics. Uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah, I, I always thought that um, <coughs> Phuket is making the transition from being a tropical paradise 30 years ago to being an urban island. Uh, it is going to become more like Singapore, but to catch up with the infrastructure, they are going to have to spend billions and billions and inconvenience hundreds of people. The only way they'd really realistically be able to do it properly is to close the island for two years and do all the infrastructure and then bring everybody back. Now, they did that at, uh, what, it was Boracay, I think. They closed the island for six months or something to fix a whole lot of infrastructure problems it may not have been boracay but it was one of those famous philippine islands and uh, yeah i think sometimes trying to fix up all the infrastructure problems and the road transport problems in phuket whilst 12 million tourists a year are traveling there will be impossible just have to see what happens uh okay but we've been speaking pretty much about the cost of living today and I suppose I've been trying to emphasize that all these YouTube videos that 
claim they know what the cost of living in Thailand are just not worth watching. The, the only way that you can realistically figure out is to jump on the internet, do some research generally, and then come here and live your chosen lifestyle for two or three months and really judge what the actual costs are. Um, okay, if you want to live your life good, good with few, get a little Jonas, I'm trying to sort of read this while editing it for you. If you want to live your life good with few getaways, amount you must have at least 60,000 baht a month. So that's obviously more than $1,000 a month. That's about twice that. I think you're getting closer to uh, what I would call a mildly realistic sum. And again, you know, what's living? You can exist, you can eat three meals a day, sleep in a bed and uh, walk down the street. But once you move out beyond that, you know, wanting to go and eat in a nice restaurant or go and have a night out with friends, go to a movie, uh, buy a motorbike, uh, get health insurance, then the costs just expand out from that initial $1,000 or 60,000 baht a month. Um, yeah, I would say 60,000 baht a month is obviously much more realistic, but I think some people, once you total everything together, are still going to be, going to be struggling at uh, that 60,000 baht a month. Uh, Thug Life, Tim, can't you just fly back to Australia for treatment if you get sick? Well, no, uh, Thug Life, um, I've been out of the country for uh, 13 years. I'm not a resident. I'm not a taxpayer in Australia anymore. So I don't have Medicare anymore in Australia. If I arrived back there and arrived at a hospital, they'd say, who the hell are you? Oh, you got an Australian passport? We don't care, where's your Medicare card? So uh, no, I'm disconnected from Australia as far as my uh, Medicare is concerned, which was the basically the free healthcare that you get in Australia. So, uh, and also, um, if I need anything done, I'll, I'll get it done here in Thailand. Um, you know, some of the private hospitals here are very, very good, uh, very well equipped, up to the standard and in many cases beyond that which I'd experience in Australia. And if I want simple things done, uh, like I had a bad bite and I needed treatment, I went up to the local hospital here in Pai Mern, a little public hospital, but they got an emergency section, had to wait five minutes and the doctor uh, sorted me out. So, yeah, uh, now I have no reason to go back to Australia for any medical care. Uh, this is from True Blue Tie. Tim, question your puppy, lovely dog, but can you keep him? Don't need to inform the authorities or check if he's been chipped. Uh, I know he's got a good home. I see soy dogs I'd like to take home. That's a very good point. Um, I don't think there's any such thing as dog registration here in Thailand. I'm saying that with complete ignorance. I don't, I, don't, I don't think there is cat and dog registration here. I don't see dogs walking around with the the registration thing. Um, is it, well, we went to the vet last week. You're sort of making me think uh, twice here. Uh, they would have checked it if, if uh, she was chipped and she wasn't. So she's, yeah, pretty much just walked in off, uh, off the, the, the beach. I'm pretty sure she was dumped. She's a pretty active little puppy and that probably would have uh, scared a, a young Thai family. Maybe they had a kid and, you know, puppies like to nip and they've got sharp little teeth. So maybe something like that happened and they decided just to leave her at the beach. I don't know. All I know is Daisy is now part of the family. The cats appear to have accepted her. And um, we're very happy to have uh, Daisy as our new dog. My last dog, Molly, brought a lot of joy. And uh, yeah, it's great to have a dog around the house again. So uh, just a few more and then we're time to say goodbye because you're probably bored with me and I'm, well, I'm sort of running out of steam. Uh, Notice the bars rattle more in the wrapper. Brought back a hundred double dipped last month. Woolies had a special, this is Woolworths, on only Australian $1.35 as opposed to, I don't know what we're talking about. Are we talking about Tim Tams again or something? 
Random guy says, whatever you're spending in the West to live, you can have a better life for the same money in Thailand. That's the bottom line. Random guy, I think you've uh, provided that little moment of wisdom that we've all been waiting for today. I think you're absolutely right. Uh, once you total everything up, whatever you're spending in the West to live, you can have a better life for the same money in Thailand. That's the bottom line. A very different life, but I think you're right. Random guy, thank you very much for that pearl of wisdom. And uh, I don't think I can add, add anything uh, beyond that. So uh, thank you for that, uh, that final say on that particular topic. Uh, chip registration is not common in Thailand, uh, but not enforced by law, unlike most, most Western countries. I don't, I don't even know where I'd take my dog to get registered. Uh, the local municipality. I, as I said, I just don't think dog registration exists. Uh, there is no pet registration in Thailand, at least in the provincial areas. Thank you, Adam. That's, uh, that, that's what I thought. I, I didn't know for sure, but in all the time I've been here, I just can't remember seeing a dog with a, a dog tag or anything. Uh, 739 watching. Hey, wow, wow. <laughs> so hello to all 739 of you. It's, it's great to have you with us. Pretty sure Daisy is part dingo. Better check her birth certificate, says Wilco. Yeah, some of the uh, soy dogs have a bit of a dingo look about them. Uh, dingoes are an Australian uh, indigenous. It's not a dog breed. I, I think dingoes aren't dogs. They're sort of some evolutionary offshoot before dogs. I think they don't bark. Um, they came to fame in that Lindy Chamberlain case, and Dingo's got my baby. Uh, but um, yeah, I'm pretty sure Dingo's, although they look like dogs, aren't strictly dogs. But uh, she, there was a lot of people who said she looks like a Belgian something or other. And uh, some of the photos look similar, but she's a much smaller dog than that Belgian breed. And uh, she does have uh, sort of the, the ripples and the wrinkles in her forehead. And uh, I think I'm starting to see the start of a bit of a ridge on her spine, which suggests there's a, probably a bit of Thai ridge back in her heritage. But I mean, at the end of the day, she's just a very roly-poly, happy, funny, lovely, sometimes calm, bit chewy, puppy soy dog at the moment. And uh, we're just very happy to have her. Does Daisy like Marmite? Well, look, we haven't. We don't have Marmite. Usually, if I have any of those mites, I have the Pro Mite, but uh, she hasn't tried that yet. Uh, Dingoes ate my Tim Tams. Thank you, Bill. Uh, G'day, says Shory. G'day, Tim. First time tuning in uh, live, and of course, I'm late. Uh, Shory, thank you very much for dropping in, and uh, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, I'm late to the party. Uh, I must be number 739, says Arnold Ziffer. It's not a Belgian shepherd. No, it's not Cosmo. It's not a Belgian anything. She's a soy dog. Probably, uh, if you see the soy dogs, after a while you sort of get a bit of a sense of what the common garden variety soy dog looks like. And she sort of looks like that. Uh, I mean, soy dogs can be look like a Pomeranian or they can look like a Labrador, depending on uh, which dog was dumped and where. But there sort of is a, it's not a breed, obviously, but there is a bit of a look that you start to notice on the, uh, the average soy dog after a while. And uh, as a, they're not a breed, but I'm just using the term loosely, as a breed, after many, many, many years surviving on the streets and the the paddocks and the beaches of Thailand, they it's sort of become very hardy. And uh, yeah, they're, they're usually very healthy, very uh, even-tempered dogs, generally. Okay, Swati Kun Tim, as long as you are an Australian, according to Google search, you can still entitle for Medicare. Uh, just may need a bit of waiting period. Pad Thai, that's interesting. Um, I don't think, because uh, I don't have uh, an Australian license, driving license. I don't have a Medicare card. I don't think I can get Medicare. But uh, thank you for, for reminding me. But if I was really sick, the last thing I want to do is sit on a plane for 10 hours. But anyway, I, I get uh, what people are saying. 
Uh, been subscribed for ages, mate. Enjoy your channel. Thank you, Shory. Scarface. Yes, dingoes do bark. Okay, but their vocalizations are more varied than just barking. Dingoes have a range of vocalizations that they use for communication, including barking, howling, and whimpering. Okay, well, maybe dingoes are more like dogs than I thought. Adam Kidd says, our eight dogs were all soy dogs. Rolando. Hi, Tim. Yesterday morning here in Chaya, Sud District of Suratani, one Polish man climbed... Uh, yes, I read that story, and uh, I understand what happened at the end of that. So I, I don't want to be mentioning that uh, without being able to put the usual warning for uh, matters uh, like that. Young Captain put on a little hello dance in the background. Did he? Where's Captain? Captain, come and say hello. It's, it's our Captain moment of the day. Everybody wants to say hello to Captain, so come and say hello. Hello. And so we'd better turn the camera down. There you are. So um, you're on holidays still. Yes, I am. What have you been doing for your holidays? I think I'm playing with my friend. Go play. Like, playing with your friends. Hi, Car. Huh? What did you say? I think I'm playing with my friend. With hi, MC. Okay, and um, are you helping in the shop? Do you help mum? Yes. Yes? What Do you wash the dishes? No, I clean up the tables. You clean up the tables? Okay, yes. do you do any cooking? No. What's your favourite food? My favourite food is mm. salmon. Salmon? Ooh, you've got very expensive tastes. And these are your pajamas. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you for saying hello, Captain. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Good old Captain. So our little Captain moment today. <laughs> and <laughs> Mummy, the man talked to me. Um, so there we go. Great addition to the Diva calendar that we're still waiting for, Tim. Great addition to the Diva calendar that we're still waiting for. Uh, and Black Hibiscus saying, hello, Captain. My life medical insurance is through Thai Life Insurance Company. So, look, um, this um, is always an issue. You know, which insurance company do you go with? And uh, I don't want to make any recommendations because you really have to do your own individual research. Uh, they are all good for one thing and not good for another thing, and you need to find out what's going to suit you. So... Um, I usually find finding a broker that has access to a number of different uh, health insurance packages and policies is a good answer and they will know which policy is probably best suited for you. And as I'm speaking to you, uh, I'm just seeing a lot of white spray going up. So those uh, swell are coming in from the Andaman Sea, crashing into the Taimung Beach and exploding. Uh, into meat. Look at that. Some big swell coming in. So really worth watching. I'm going to go down to the beach after this and just uh, enjoy watching nature for a couple of hours because I can. All right, one final message. What do we got here? Uh, good job, Captain. Everybody's talking about Captain. They all love Captain. Might get Captain to do his own show. Uh, okay, the Snives, Daisy, Dusty and Dina, the Diva calendar. Okay, I'm with you now. Yeah, when it came to the time where I thought, okay, this dog's going to stay, what are we going to call it? Um, I had a few other names uh, in mind, but then I thought, no, 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 it's got to start with a D. For a dog, it's good to start with a hard consonant on the sound of the name uh, because it's going to be easier for them to detect it and hear the, the, the name. But uh, as I've learned over the past week, Daisy to the dog probably sounds quite similar to Dusty. So whenever I say Daisy or Dusty, both sort of prick up their ears, especially around food time. So, um, there we go. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Would be idea to get a broker on the show. Eileen, I'm going to do that. We've got Max. We had Max on probably a year ago now. I'm going to try and get Max sitting next to me next week. Max is a very good broker. He's got a very successful business. 
<coughs> I knew him when he was just uh, an agent at another broker. He branched out after much huff, huffing and puffing and he's built a very successful uh, insurance company. So I'm going to get Max. I'm going to try and get him here next week. Great suggestion for you, from you, Eileen. And I'm going to do exactly what you asked for. And uh, we'll get you to ask all your questions. And Max, surprisingly, had answers for things I thought, oh, Max won't know this. He did. So he was a good guest. He speaks great English too. Okay. So we sort of started talking about the cost of living and we veered into a thousand other topics. But that's what usually happens on the program, isn't it? Um, but thank you for dropping in. I mean, it's just great to sort of sit and have this time together. Some 700 and something people. I don't even know where to look to find out that number. Um, but uh, yeah, we've sort of come to the end of the program. I've got to go and take some guests uh, to the airport and uh, got a couple of taxis coming actually because we've got a whole lot of them. Uh, also recording the grumpy old men with Steve today. I'm sure Steve got some great stories from the week. So uh, we'll have Marmite, Promite, Vegemite and then we'll chase them down with a couple of Tim Tams. So, uh, whoop. no lunch, no lunch, just Vegemite and Tim Tams. Uh, and we'll probably talk a bit about Anzac Day as well and uh, other important uh, sort of days for various people around the world. I thank you very much for watching today. Uh, I'm pretty much over my COVID. So uh, just got to get rid of this cough and I'll be 100% again. But it has been great to spend the last 60, 73 minutes with you. And uh, we'll do it again next time. Bye.